Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and this one is a fun one. It's with Michelle and Andrew Munoz from Moose Craft Barbecue here in Los Angeles. This is essentially a catch-up interview because the last time I interviewed them, they were about to go into Smorgasbord in Los Angeles, and since then, a lot of things have changed. Their growth was exponential at Smorgasbord, but then they had to shut it down. So we talk about everything that has happened since the pandemic and how they've had to change their business model several times to make things work right as things were starting to shut down the nba and different events and i think they were looking they said that smorgasburg was looking at disneyland to see what they were going to do they had ordered a ton of meat for smorgasburg as well as a brewery pop-up and then everything shut down so they had to think on their feet and vacuum seal stuff and their customers and fans and people that love them really stepped up and purchased everything that they had but since then they've created a model where they now put items up for pre-order they have a specific amount of time that they put them up for people can order meats by the pound they can order plates which they've never done before sides as well as a dessert key lime pie michelle talks about that that's a definitely a new thing on their menu so you can order everything ahead of time and then it's usually not from that week but for the week after so it's a they do, right now they're doing pop-ups every two weeks and it's really working out it's making a lot of sense they're really able to navigate this properly so we talk about that we talk about how social media has been a big component in getting the word out and growing their business so that's that's nice and it's just it's a casual conversation we talk too about the fact that they want to open a brick and mortar and at the very beginning we kind of joke about it but at the end we talk in depth about what they want to do they're sitting in front of a it's roughly a 200 gallon uh, harper pit that they just got a backyard pit so that so they can experiment and cook at home they've now had pits from fat stack a cucaracha and harper and we discuss that and we discuss how important it is for them to be able to have offset cookers at their new location what they're expecting to have at their new location to make it suit what they want to present to the public and how they want it to be like coming to their own home it's a great interview Smokey, their french bulldog makes an appearance diego their son makes an appearance and in the end i'm a huge fan of theirs i love them like family i'm working on a piece right now about Moosecraft and Los Angeles, so stay tuned for that on the website. But I can't thank them enough for all the hard work that they do and all the love and care that they put into their food to give to Los Angeles. If you haven't had Moosecraft barbecue yet and you're coming to Los Angeles, you can order ahead online if, it's, if it corresponds with, with your stay here. But if you're living in Los Angeles or in the area, please, please try them out. They're doing contactless. You order, order online ahead of time, set up a time, come to their kitchen on whatever day it is that they're selling, open your back window, they'll pop it in or put it in your trunk, completely contactless. You've got to check them out. And the Kevin's Barbecue Joints website and YouTube show is brought to you by Treaty Oak Distilling. They're available at treatyoakdistilling.com or you can go to their location in Dripping Springs, Texas. 26 acres, sprawling, spread out. Try all their bourbon, all their rum, all their gin. They also have beer and wine that they make on property that they sell just on property. They have Alice's Restaurant, which is a barbecue and live fire restaurant. They're distilling again, so check them out, treatyoakdistilling.com. And if you're liking these, please subscribe. As you can see, I'm doing about two or three of these per week. Don't want you to miss out. Apparently, you're supposed to subscribe and click some kind of bell. I should know that by now. I have no nothing, so subscribe if you're enjoying these. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com. Tons of content, all this stuff on the social media at kevinsbbqjoints. Stay safe. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you, Andrew and Michelle, for taking the time. I think our last interview was right before Smorg, right? Before you guys joined Smorg. Uh, yeah, it might have been. It's been, yeah, it's been, been a while. Been a year yeah. Then, huh? yeah. I, mean, yeah, I think it was probably leading into what we were going to do next at that point. And... Yeah, so now so now we'll talk about the, the brick and mortar, essentially, right? We'll talk about, was two stories. How big is the brick and mortar, the new one? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah like yeah, multiple they're... locations. Yeah. You we're guys... like. We're going to be in every food hall across <laughs> Los Angeles. You know. Yeah, it's good. It's cool. I'm glad you're doing the Vegas thing right now. I think that's a smart idea. Yeah, of we're course. going to open up before Slab. <laughs> Jump on that. Yeah, that's a good, that's, that's we a, also have a, a, a location that we haven't mentioned in South County. You know, we'll tell yeah. we'll Brenda talk about and Daniel later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, actually, it's actually in the mission itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll add that because you know that's lev levity. But how are you guys doing? How are you? How are you handling this? How? What's it been like since COVID started? Woo! 
what's it been like? It's been hectic, extremely hectic. Yeah. For once, I think, to start off, our kids have been out of school since March. <laughs> yes. And that has complicated things tremendously because, you know, Andrew and I... Be- There's a lot more coordinating that right. we have to do. Mm-hmm. So because the kids aren't in school, we have to see if, like, my grandparents are around to watch them or, you know, somewhere else, someone else, her mom... You know, and then also trying to minimize our contacts with a lot of different people. Yeah. So that's kind of why we were doing them every other weekend. Right. Just to kind of on a week, off for a full week, shut it down, see how we feel, and then start it up again. So that's kind. Of, that kind of was the initial reason behind doing it every other week. That and on top of like, uh, you know, kitchen and kitchen fees and availability inside the inside the kitchen. And at, and at first, like, it, Smorgasbord was still open just for a little bit at the very end. And it was kind of, that, it was like that moment. I remember talking to you guys and how stressful it was because no one really knew what was going to happen in the city. No, yeah. So we, we were planning, it was a busy week for us, the week everything got canceled. So when everything shut down, I can't remember the exact date in March, but when uh, when that happened, I think it was the week prior when it started, like, affecting sports teams. And so we were prepping for smorgasburg and on top of that we were going to have a big brewery pop up in long beach oh yeah yeah at trademark brewing and so we were in communication with smorgasburg and they were like we're we're gonna keep going until they tell us we can't uh and they were like we're really you know keeping an eye on disney grand central market and and then sports you know and and so we're like all right so we bought all of the stuff we prepped it and then the next morning like the nba was postponed Disney shut down, and then we got the email saying they were going to also Uh. freeze. So we had enough food for two events, and we ended up moving most of it at the brewery. We just had a lot of support, people who came down. And then whatever we did, and we vac sealed it, and uh, people picked it up during the week, and we got rid of it, thankfully. Yeah, you guys, it's it seems like people have really come out to support you guys, and it makes me happy. I'm sure yeah. it makes you guys happy, but from afar, you know, it's just it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. it was it was interesting because we really didn't know what to expect. We were like, oh well, what are we gonna do in the time that we're off? And you know, I don't know if anyone even expected it to be this long, and so we're just like, well, let's pivot and figure out what we can do inside of our kitchen and. Uh, our the kitchen owner Cindy, she's been very helpful, Super supportive. Um, and she was just like, whatever you guys need to do, do it. You know, like mm-hmm. you need more 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 refrigeration, you need a freezer for anything so it doesn't go bad. Refrigerate it, oh, freeze great. it. Like I'm not gonna charge you extra, and then do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do, and if you need to do curbside out of my kitchen, you know you can do that. And so she allowed us to do it along with other vendors in the in the kitchen that operated that where the model worked. Yeah. And so we've been doing it like that since. Well, didn't you guys at first just try to do cryo and pre-orders and I remember. Yeah. yeah. So so we did the we did the back seal just for like two weeks. So I think or maybe even a week. It was just like what we didn't move at the brewery or because of what we had extra because we didn't get to do smorg. We portioned it out, back sealed it all, and. We took a large order for a week, and then everybody came and took it. And uh, it was right in the beginning, so like the back still stuff really worked. People wanted stuff that they could store in the freezer for a month or two, and so so people took that. And then after that, we were just like, okay, well, we can continue to do that, or we can see if we can just do like curbside pickup pop-ups from the kitchen and and, in, and still give that same experience mm-hmm. that we were doing at Smorgasburg, with you know serving the sides and the meats and doing it by the pound and we did plates and yeah so initially we did out. uh plates which is something we hadn't done yeah uh, since, in, the since the backyard days. Yeah, I remember. To come. so we were just like all right well let's see if a plate will work and it worked but then at the same time we had we had a lot of people who were like well i just want to buy like it by the by the pound like you guys normally do it so then we switched the plates off and then went kind of just like what we just our full menu like what we did at smorg minus the sandwiches mm-hmm. and that really took off and so now the last month we've slowly incorporated a couple plate options back into the menu. Okay. And so now people are ordering a plate and then maybe a pound of brisket for later in the week or oh, something like cool. that. Oh, that's cool. It's a little bit for everyone. And then you guys added the pastrami too. That's a, like you've been doing that for a couple weeks, right? Yeah. So well, we were doing the pastrami at Smorgasburg mm-hmm. and then we just took it off. We were, it's a lot of work. Um, we you were need doing more. it as a beef rib though. Yeah, we were doing pastrami True. beef ribs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so then we added that into our week, our every other week pickup. And so right now our, our 
idea is like, well, what can we do different every time we do a, a, a sale so that it's interesting? So, you know, if one week we do pastrami briskets, you know, this coming weekend we're doing our beef cheek taco kits. And then we added a new sausage. We did a, a birria sausage, you know, been tweaking. And this past weekend we, we tried it and we were just like, all right, this is where it's at. So, uh, so we're happy where, where that sausage is at, but it's not on the menu next week. So we're just kind of rotating it just to kind of keep people interested have something new one week that you can't get the next just to kind of draw people to order something if they want this this week then they know they have to get it or wait like maybe two weeks before it's back on that's smart no and it's good to mix it up yeah it's good for you guys too. Cre- creatively, it's important to do that. I was just yeah. Gonna say that. Yeah, it keeps it interesting. It's not like the same old menu every single week. It's like the same standards, but yeah. then, you know, we can have something fun that we've been working on that we really didn't have a chance, the time to experiment with in the past because Smorgasburg was like a weekly thing and it was so. Uh, so much food that we had to prep that it was labor intensive and we didn't have the space in the smokers to really like test cook a small amount of anything. So uh, now that we're like not trying to overwhelm us or our crew when they help us, uh, we do a little bit less, but that little bit of space that I have in one of the smokers, I'll like do a small batch of something Mm -hmm. and then we'll kind of tweak it until we get it to where we like it. And then we'll like share it with our team and then we'll get feedback from them. And uh, if it's like there are uh, guinea pigs, yeah, so uh, they don't, they don't lucky complain, guinea pig. You know? They're so lucky that yeah. they get there. Uh, and then they were just like, oh yeah, that, that's good. And then we're like, all right, so then we'll, we'll add it to the menu as a special or something. So that's kind of been what we've been doing lately. And also too, the, I, I want to get a little bit more into the menu, but the key lime pie. Oh yeah. yeah. That too. So during this quarantine, we've been baking a lot more, both Andrew and I, and I've gotten a lot more comfortable with making pastries and experimenting, and I got to say, I really like it. So hopefully in the future, I mean, right now it's key lime pie. I can't wait for you to try it. And hopefully in the future, when we do have our brick and mortar, you know, we can expand that dessert menu too so i'm excited about that you probably ordered a key lime pie from us kevin but then we donated <laughs> so. I know. I've, I've ordered more, food. I've, I've ordered more food. It, yeah. I've ordered so much yeah. food from you guys that i've never seen well, thank it, you we appreciate you hey, well, well, well obviously take care of you when we actually see no, you i love again. you guys yeah. I, I don't mind it i don't expect anything out of it it's like my brother and sister helping like it's how many key lime pies are you making now it looks like a lot right it, it just is- depends mm-hmm. every week it just fluctuates like this past week i did about 30 this next coming week it's about double so it just depends on it was funny because last week like middle of the week or three quarters into the the week of orders we had like nine key lime pies sold and she was like oh man that's no fun and then (laughs) and then by like sunday when we were going to cut it off i checked and we were like oh you it's 30 pies and she's like okay that's pretty good let's leave it there so this week three days in she was already at like 50 pies something like that so it was just like oh wow okay let's let's not take too many more because then it just gets overwhelming because we're limited on kitchen prep time you know it gets really hard when you're backed into someone coming in to prep right after you so we have to also keep those things in mind. Otherwise, we'd let it keep going. Can you set your system so that it has a, like a maximum number of something? So there are some apps out there where you can be like, I only want to sell like this many pounds of brisket or this many whatever it is, like key lime pies. And it'll automatically say sold out like the Square site does that. Right. Yeah. But then there, the pickup for that is like set. like So you can do it three days out. So if they order Thursday for Sunday, it would work. But then if they order on Friday, it would say pickups on Monday. Oh, so okay. so the app we're using now allows us to set a specific day for pickup, but it doesn't allow us to set an inventory. So it's something that I have to track manually on the back end with a spreadsheet. Yeah, so. oh, I see. Now, is it cool? Is it cool to see the orders come in? Can you see that? Like, is that fun? It is kind of cool, especially in the beginning. Uh, so we have it's through Wix and. Uh, so we get like uh, phone notifications, like whenever we get an order. Oh. Um, so it's kind of cool. Like some days it'll be like sl- kind of slow, and then and then other days, you know, the right post, and like we'll get like you know maybe twenty twenty five orders in a half a day. Yeah. So it, it's kind of interesting, like to see that. It's actually, probably good for your for the future for a brick and mortar or for whatever else you do. It'll give you. Yeah, with this whole pandemic, it's like. It's opened up our eyes to just the different ways we can deliver our food. The possibility. Uh, versus just like first come, first serve, mm-hmm. and that's it. You know, even if when Smorgasburg opens back up, like, you know, we've already talked about like, well, what if we do like a curbside pickup the day before for some people, like a limited amount 
because we're already making the food anyways mm -hmm. and then still have enough for smorgasburg you know just yeah. to because not everyone wants to go to smorgasburg so that's a good uh, idea so just kind of different things like that and then and eventually works. like for brick and mortar too like we would always make sure that we have enough food for the brick and mortar or wherever we're at but like if we can make something work where it's like curbside pickup you know maybe it wouldn't be like I want to order it for this weekend. You know, maybe it'd be like a window thing. Like if you want it, you got to order it way in advance. So mm -hmm. that's kind of your wait period. Because uh, we don't want to make it unfair to people who just want to come and wait in a line to get right. the food. So yeah. uh, we'll figure it out. But at least we, at least with this, we kind of learned there are different ways to, to move your food. And the fact that you guys could survive during this, that means a lot. Yeah. Because <laughs> there was time, I think there was a time where you guys were wondering like, what, What's going to happen? Like, no, I think, yeah, I mean, it was everybody. Scary. Yeah. We were all, I mean, we had to literally change our, our, our business motto overnight and none of us knew what to expect. Our whole goal from the beginning, even now is just trying to just stay afloat and still just try to stay at least above water. Yeah. That's the only unfortunate thing is for, uh, before we were like working with the purpose to save towards like a brick and mortar. Yeah. And right now it's like, you can't really plan for what next month or next week is going to bring. You just kind of have to keep moving with mm -hmm. it. And Always if something happens, you got to adjust to it. So that's kind of our model right now. And so, like, that's why we're also changing our menu and offering different things. Because, you know, like, there's different trends. Like, sometimes it'll be busy and then it'll level off and then it gets busy again. So it's like, it's very unexpected right now. You know, we're just trying to do the best that we can, just like a and lot of market. other people out there. Okay. Yeah. A yeah. lot of social media yeah, marketing um, is what really helps, you know, just trying to stay really just active on it. Post every day, do stories, let people know, hey, we're, we're still here. Mm -hmm. We're open. You guys eat us barbecue, you know, please keep moves in mind. And, you know, just hustling with social media has really been. It's always been important for us because that's how we started. It was like Instagram and, yeah. you know, DMs and you can come to our backyard pop ups. So. That's always been our course. So I think like transitioning to mainly marketing on social media wasn't that hard, but it just became that much more important because, yep. you know, Smorgasburg wasn't there and it wasn't something that was reliable every weekend anymore. So uh, being able to pivot the Instagram account to like heavily market it and just post more uh, just meant we yeah. just had to take more photos. So and it seems and it seems like you're getting really good reaction to your posts. Big time. Yeah, like a lot more than I've ever noticed. It seems. So Michelle, she manages all of the social media, doing... like 99 percent of it. If the <laughs> post is kind of boring, it's probably because I did. <laughs> True. <laughs> but like if if there's, she always tries to put a caption that engages the audience, mm -hmm. so we get uh, comments in the in the comments field, but. Uh, but we've just noticed in general, like the views or like the clicks or the likes mm -hmm. have like, like doubled and tripled in some cases, like before we'd post a brisket shot and maybe get like 500 likes. Yeah. And like right now they're getting like 12, 13, 1400 mm -hmm. likes. So it's pretty crazy and it's consistent. Yeah. So people might be on social media more too, maybe. I don't know. Oh, for yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. We're on it more. We're just kind of home when we're not working <laughs> and you know, like your phone's in your hand all the time. You're so. getting all these notifications. Yeah. Yep. Do you guys have it on set so you get notification or bells and stuff? Do you, do you know when people like things or do you just look at no, it? No, I think we turned it off a while ago yeah. because, it, yeah, after a while it just drains your battery when <laughs> and you're always looking at just Instagram. So but we have it on in case but, we get those DMs. We want to reply. Someone's reaching out to us privately. They want to, they have a question. Yeah, I think, I think it's to... set so that you don't see the likes, but you see the com. Like if someone DMs you right. or sends you a message. That pops up in our phone, so we oh, can that's smart. Yeah, get yeah. to that quick. Yeah. Do when do you usually go on sale? When do, when do, like for the for the are you doing going to do every week now or is it every other week still? Well, that's what we're still trying to figure out. We really would love to do it every week, but like we mentioned, with with having our two kids home and not having a lot of. Um, it, there's um, no school, there's so it's hard <laughs> to have yeah. the support with mm -hmm. sitters and dropping them off and is it safe you know all yeah. that stuff. my grandma's so. like i think she's 78 so you know she's higher risk and uh so just taking our kids there we always have to think twice about that or even if her mom comes in and watches them she's in her you know mid to late 50s so yeah, yeah. And that's what you we're know all those them. different things that's why we're doing them every other week too it's like okay we're we're coming into the kitchen we know we're going to be with other people other vendors we did our sale 
let's take a couple of days because you just never know how do we feel. You know, it's a shared kitchen. Are we okay? Are we feeling okay? Do we need to go get a test? And then we kind of like, I guess we, I guess we kind of like judge it based on that. Okay, we'll do it again. And just keep going. And yeah. Just keep going. Yeah. I mean, we've all been fortunate. No one at our kitchen has tested <laughs> positive. Yeah. Uh, thank God. Yeah. And thank and, God. I mean, for the most part, everyone at our kitchen, you know, there's there's a few younger people, but everyone seems pretty responsible with it. Pretty like, respectful. Even outside, like they're wearing gloves, or they yeah. at minimum always have their masks on. So they we follow the rules. They follow the rules. I mean, we can never control what people are doing outside of the kitchen, but right. you know, just judging the people in the kitchen, we kind of feel like they're probably pretty responsible. Everyone outside of respects it because, each other's space. Yeah. yeah. And I think everyone knows like if they get sick, like this is what they do, then they can't do it anymore. And that just makes it tougher on them. So uh, I think we all try to do our part. Yeah. And Michelle and I, you, you and I have texted a lot about the situation and how, and how important it is to be extremely careful. And you're, you've of already, you've, you're way up there. You're up there in the, in the belief to be ultra careful. Absolutely. Yeah. So have people wanting to get moves, do they, is it usually open up on Monday or do you have a specific day you open up the sales? So we'll close it typically on Sunday, uh, Sunday night, like at midnight, we'll let it run through the whole weekend. Okay. And then since we're trying to do it every weekend or every other uh, three times a week, so when we're going to do the back to back, the next one would open up on Monday and then that would go for about a week till Sunday and then they would pick up their orders the following weekend. Gotcha. Yeah. And then. So, like, we're going to do one this weekend, but the following weekend we're going to be off. So, we're, we're letting this current one roll a couple extra days just because, you know, we can fit the food in there and, gotcha. you know, not have to worry about resetting again. We'll have a couple of days to rest. So. And I've used the site multiple times. It's really easy to set it up and you can set up a pickup time. And then what happens when I, I noticed that you posted it instructions on how do they how they pick food up what's the instruction yeah so when when people order we'll send an email out uh midweek or towards the end of the week letting people know you know the pickup instructions so it's pretty much you order your food we'll send an email the email just says to come at your selected pickup time which is anywhere between 11 and 2 and we just ask that everyone uh stay in their car pop their trunk or roll their back window down uh we have our food runners go out they drop they confirm your order they drop the food in the car and we just ask that everyone um, wear a mask. So our team is wearing a mask when they go out. And at minimum, we hope that the people receiving the food wear their mask too. Unless they have their windows up and they just pop the trunk, then, yeah. you know, that's probably safer than the mask. But um, It's yeah. completely and so, contactless. It's, mm -hmm. re it's really the safest way yeah, right now sure. to yeah. offer it. Yeah, yeah, everything is electronic payment. You know, we don't exchange any cash um, at all. So, so yeah, it's, it's as safe as it's going to be. Yeah, right I think right now. And the plus side is people don't have to wait in our lines at Smorgasburg. You know, like we would try to move it as quickly as possible, possible you know, but still like you it might be waiting good, 30 yeah. minutes, 40 minutes. And, and with, with us doing curbside, people can pick their time and you still might wait 15 minutes. You know, if, uh, we start at 11 and typically people want to come right at 11 mm -hmm. or like that final hour between one and two. So we were busy there and then noon will kind of drop off a little bit. But like yeah. 11 comes and our goal is to always, always try to have the food prep for them like 20 minutes before they come or, or at least be on that, you know, like that mindset so that when they text us, we either just finish prepping it or it's been prepped for like five minutes or so. And our runner grabs the bags and they run them outside and, you know, people get their food hot. The people text when they're actually there. Is that something? That was the other thing. So they'll just when they when they pull up, they'll shoot up a text. We have a business uh, phone number. And we'll, we all, everybody that works with us has their device set up yeah. and they all get the message. So oh, we'll cool. all be on the same page. Like this person just got here and then we'll mark it off on our list and they'll run it out. Uh, yeah. And you know, most of the time we get it right out, but sometimes it's, we ask for like 15 minutes. So I was wondering if it's cool to see like a line of cars, like that must be interesting. I was just going to say yeah. that. So there's still a line. It's just a <laughs> line of cars now. They're parked and they have air conditioning. Runners it, because yeah. they're literally sometimes like running down the block to deliver one. And then, you know, the next the order is on like the opposite side. So he has to run the other direction. It's a good workout. He's, he's sure. only, the guy who's running is only like 23 or 24. He's so he's young. He can he's handle it. it. It's our newest member i don't know if you've met frank. him yet his name's frank oh no i'll introduce you to him next time yeah, yeah he's he, a really nice i think guy. he started smorgasburg with us and he only maybe did two or three okay yeah uh, so you might not have met him he, he did like right towards the end and then uh he transitioned 
he's been with us since January, but he wasn't doing Smorgasburg in the beginning. Okay. Uh, and he was mainly doing Smorg if like Adam or, or Danny couldn't make it. And so that's why you haven't met him, but you'll meet him eventually. Oh, well, that's it. And that's also too, like, like you said, the air conditioning, it gets, this is a hot time of year for Smorgasburg. So it's nice for, oh yeah. yeah. And we all really appreciate the kitchen right now because it's air conditioned and <laughs> you know, there's good ventilation. There's nice yeah. ventilation. It's all brand new. The kitchen's only like two years old, built from the ground up pretty much. So, so yeah, it's nice to be doing everything inside you know with the ovens and the stove to keep everything warm there's some pluses to it but you know obviously we wish things were normal and back at smorgasburg oh yeah but yeah you know you know we'll get there have you heard that smorgasburg is opening in new york i think yeah they are we got an email about it so what's different about new york is they had multiple locations where they could do smorgas smorgasburg and some of those locations i believe were like indoor too okay and they weren't really operating as anything else during the week. So they were there. I think they're able to do Smorgasburg and have those vendors vend multiple times a week. Whereas where we're at in downtown, it's a, it's a produce market during the week. So to, to do Smorgasburg just on the Sunday, it's kind of hard to get vendors to, to commit to that. And then having people come in, they want to do it, but you know, the health department also is not going to allow that liability to just happen with, the case is spiking yeah so. with the and there's an insurance that has involved in things yeah exactly yeah because so, i mean that land is it's not city owned it's probably a private oh i would think so yeah yeah they're not going to want that liability on their hands so can you run down the menu really quick of like what basically you'll always have on the menu so proteins brisket spare ribs uh we'll always have a sausage one of our sausages on rotation whether it be the pork verde sausage or viria sausage or a classic jalapeno cheddar pulled pork mm-hmm. On rotation, sometimes we'll have beef ribs. Yeah, people have been asking for the beef ribs, but with the shortage, the pricing went so high. You'll always see brisket loaded beans, mac and cheese, coleslaw, and then we'll throw in a side something, maybe like a special of the week on rotation just to kind of keep things fun. Mm -hmm. And then there will always be key lime pie. I was going to say, hopefully there's always key key lime lime pie. pie. Uh. After, after, (laughs) when, so I'll tell her the order, right? She's like, how many pies do I have? And I was like, 26. And she's like, really? And I was like, okay, well, really, there's 25, but <laughs> I want one. He always, he always adds an extra one or two. Add two, one or two. Yeah. Why did you choose that? Is it because it's, it's so refreshing and wonderful, but what made you? What was the inspiration? Well, I, one, I love key lime pie. Two, I think it just, it's kind of nice to have something refreshing you know, that's dessert, that's sweet, that's tart after you just had such a rich, oh, yeah. hearty, you know what I mean? So I just thought it would be a really nice first dessert to include in our menu. And so far, it's 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 a hit. So yeah. And it looks beautiful, too. It's such a cute little princess. Thank you. It's, it looks like something. That... That's because I'm on her all the time to keep them consistent and making them, <laughs> make them look nice. And I look forward to it. Like, I've been play, I'm practicing a lot with eating more pies, pie crust, and trying to get the perfect ratio and consistency that I'm happy with. So... I can cobblers and crisps and so many other things that I want to add to the menu eventually. But right now, you know, key lime pie is... Cornbread. She wants to do cornbread. Corn There's so many <laughs> things I want to do. But, you know, when you're working out of a commissary kitchen, yeah, it, no, in a way, it's a is a little... It, it, it's, it's hard, it's, it's hard it's to test really all that limiting. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you're on the clock, essentially. It's probably smart for you guys right now because you guys would test so many different things. It would be crazy. Well, that's why we have we just got this little pit behind us. Yeah, I want to um, talk about that that Harper pit. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, so we just got this. Ooh, uh, Andrew. Ah. That's so rad. <laughs> there it is. Uh, uh, yeah, we just got this because, you know, our, our doubles are in storage and we only pull them out when we need them. And, and then the 500, the original, is that... Um, is at the kitchen. Oh, yeah, Smokey. Yeah, it's... this is Smokey. Ah, oh, Smokey's so cute. In case you were wondering why Michelle was breathing heavy, it was the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it was just like we needed something at the house to, like, like test cook, too. Like, we're off. We have more time. So it's like, oh, this kind of sounds like a good idea. Well, let's test cook it. And it was like a pain to go to the kitchen yeah. and spend six hours there when I could just easily have something in my backyard and you know, do it at a much more chill rate. So. Is it a 125 or what is it? It was a 250 and then they just cut it down. It's not quite 200. They, they cut it to like 48 inches mm-hmm. uh, from cap to cap. So the grate is 40 inches by 30 deep. So 
it, or 29 deep. So it, it has the it has the feel of a big pit, but in a more compact size. You know, you can fit like maybe three three br briskets in the back, a couple racks of ribs, and then it has a top shelf if you want to do something like chicken on top. Uh, but it, you know, it's 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 nothing crazy. You can't can't really do a pop up with it or anything. Bet he got some orders because when he posted about it. People were saying, like, how much, how much? He's like, I DM'd you, I DM'd you. I, I, I saw it constantly. So at least I'm sure they got a lot of interest. He you guys. Us and he was like, man, you guys have a pretty strong reach. We're like, why? He <laughs> mean, he's like, I, I put my phone down and I come back. And every single time I come back, I have like 10 new messages asking about that pit. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool to hear. Like, hopefully we see more of them and hopefully he draws a lot of business from it, too. For yeah. sure. And then, so, so now for the contro controversial question, you've had a fat stack. An El Cucaracha and Harper. No, I'm not going to ask that question. But there, but it is kind of nice. You've had you've had different pits from different people. They're going to answer you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like barbecue. You can go to a bunch of different places, and yep. they all do it well, but they all do it differently. It's the same thing with the pits. They, at this point, all three of them have built so many that they all do it well, and the, each they product is is yeah. different, but they're all like built built with quality in mind so and you got them like all in different like, er that. early stages like fat stack was an early early days of fat stack early days of akukaracha and this is like harper's been, been kind of rolling for a while now their pits are everywhere they are now yeah uh yeah that's kind of how it was like uh fat stack was early on and we got like we did our first pit and then dennis had done a couple of them like he did one for himself and i when i was building my first little 250 I had asked him a bunch of questions, and then when he rolled it into an actual business, I was like, "Well, I have to kind of get a pit from him, you know." And and I and they were just really nice, so I wanted one, and so I ordered one, and we made it work. And you know, that's what we that's our that's our workhorse for now. And then this one's cool for the backyard, but for the big the bigger ones, whenever we open up a restaurant, you know, like we'll work with everybody just to see what what kind of deal we can get from any, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. what makes sense for us. Yeah, yeah, because you'll probably have five one thousand gallon on pits like yeah uh, oh yeah at least you <laughs> like, know <laughs> that'll just be for the smorgasburg and then we'll have five more for that's right you know the south county location yeah. and... it's just a weird time Ugh. it's such it a is. hard time yeah i lose like all the weight i gain during the week when i cook on the weekend oh that's true huh uh, and then i gain it back on monday <laughs> <laughs> that's all it takes is one day yeah but... are you thinking about a, a brick and mortar like i know we, we talk about it a little bit but that won't you until COVID's done. You're not going to really think much about that, right? So we're, I still, mean, yeah. we're still looking. Um, we've seen a few spots, um, oh. but it's just really hard right now to. It's hard to pull that trigger really on something <laughs> and and do that right. In who knows, this might still just be the beginning of COVID. Who knows yeah. how long it's going to go for? But even just in this environment, like if we were already committed and had a spot, and you know we'd work to get it done. But right now Correct. we've kind of like are a lot more cautious you know we're still looking you know we have an agent that's, that's still showing us places or mm -hmm. are still sending us emails and if it looks interesting you know we've gone to see them but it's still like is it really worth it to do it right now especially you know because a lot of them do need a lot of work and you know you have to manage your business that that's bringing you in your 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 income at but time, then at yeah. the same time you also have to split yourself to be there to make sure that the project's being done correctly, correctly. and with our limited resources with babysitters and whatnot, like and our it's, kid, our it's kids just not in school and they're not going it's just back very, to school. Yeah, it's very difficult yeah. to figure out how we would manage that. So how to juggle it right yeah. now really is just, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. Would you want to do something close to your house? We want to do something where it makes sense. So yeah. it doesn't matter anywhere in Los Angeles. It doesn't have to be here in East LA. It doesn't have to be anywhere near where we live but we just want it somewhere in los angeles could be the gabriel valley could be you know the san fernando valley central la it just i kind of look at it the way i tell andrew it's like that dress like the wedding dress you know like when you see it you'll just know this is it maybe no he doesn't feel that way but that's how i feel every time i walk in and our agent shows us the place you know it's like that vibe that you get it's either the it, it it feels right or it doesn't feel right it either makes sense or it doesn't make sense you know just what do you think andrew yeah i don't know about the wedding dress uh, <laughs> situation but <laughs> you know <laughs> i guess it's more like if you when you find find that perfect mask right now but andrew we're not, just fits right. we're not looking right. for something i don't i mean we've really been open to being shown anything anywhere yeah i mean i think initially we were kind of like oh, it has to be on the east side but as long as for us, our goal is to try to do it in Los Angeles County and do it with our smokers. I think that would be big for the city of Los Angeles oh, yeah. or the county of for Los Angeles sure. in general. It's important. Uh, and 
you know, it, it gives us a lot of hope seeing our friends' uh, heritage, Danny and Brenda, do it in Orange in County. South Orange it's County, uh, and do it the way they wanted to do it. So it's like it's like, well, it did happen in, in Southern California, right. and they did it in the area that where they're from. So hopefully, we can do that same model or something similar in yeah, our fingers county. Crossed, our, yeah. Yeah. Fingers mm-hmm. crossed. That's that's our goal. That's our goal. Yeah, you want to you want to use an offset. You want to do it the way that you've been cooking because that's the way you're comfortable cooking. Mm-hmm. Right. We yeah, yeah. we want to still be able to provide that experience. We're looking for a standalone brick and mortar. Doesn't matter where. You know, just as long as it has the right space, good parking, somewhere where we can park our smokers, somewhere where now now with COVID, somewhere where there's some outdoor seating, for sure, um, some indoor seating, and just something that you know is. It's Even if it has and welcoming a... and we could just get to see our customers and and serve them food and just, you know, just have that fun experience that we used to have. like welcome, welcoming them into our new home. Yes. You know, in the beginning, it was literally welcoming them into our backyard, into our home. And I can't wait till the day comes where we have our new home where we can just open the doors and let people come in whenever. So it'll happen. It's it'll happen. It's just a uh, better time. And, and 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 possibly someone watching this or listening to this might have a spot. You never know. It could be or a Yeah. I mean we haven't done that yet where we've reached out on Instagram. We've talked about it like you know, because we have a pretty good following and right. it's just like the more you reach out and let people know, then you're going to get people responding back with maybe a possible uh, opportunities. We've been pretty we, conservative with that. Yeah, we yeah. might do that eventually, but right now we're not, you know, because because we're not in the biggest rush right now because of the current circumstances, you know, uh, we've held back on that. But I think if things start to get better and they're, you know, we might do that just to get a little bit more feedback from people and, you know, possible opportunity. Yeah. There might be someone out there who would like have that passion and want to help us bring it bring moves to brick and mortar location too so you know we'll see we'll see yeah. how it goes we yeah. won't know until it happens all this stuff is happening you know for a reason i guess or in in some it's for some reason so this is this is i'm i'm just happy to catch up with you guys again i'm happy to i'm happy that you guys are able to pivot and figure out a business model that works that's important thank you yeah, yeah we're, thank you we're happy that we were we're still figuring it out to be honest kevin yeah. and we're just going with the flow doing our our very best like i said to just to stay afloat and to to keep moves craft barbecue going that's really right now our main focus is just to keep it going thank you for keeping your series going because now that we're home we have a lot more time to to actually sit down and watch them and <laughs> oh, listen yeah. to everything you know because I would I put it on sometimes when I'm cooking just to kind of hear what everyone's doing across, you know, Texas or wherever you interview everybody across the country. So uh, it's kind of cool to hear like what people are doing in, in, in this time, too, mm-hmm. and see how it's similar to maybe mm-hmm. what we're doing or, or not. But, um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of cool just to to hear everybody's different perspective on, on COVID and and how they've pivoted to to the time thank so, you yeah, yeah no i've been trying that. to like i have been, i have a couple people this week that are across the united states and just because i want to yeah i want to see how it's working all across the united states because texas right. we know texas is is pretty savvy about it and they've you know they have yeah. they have a built-in clientele like these people will wait hours and hours whereas somewhere in virginia maybe it's just not that mindset so it's that's i'm just trying yeah. you know, i'm not trying I, to I keep mean, it I, and i think in texas too it's like even they have to even be more on it because there's so many of them. True, true, you know, true. Like, yeah. So they, they're always having to – for us, like, I guess we're a little fortunate in that what we provide is something that you really can't get everywhere mm. here. You know, there's only a handful of us uh, right now anyways. I'm sure hopefully it will grow and, you know, maybe we'll – maybe we'll have it's our growing. own thing so it is growing it's so. growing yeah yeah but, oh it is it's it's and it's a slow process but it's if done right i think it's going to be we'll have a, a great scene and it's a much better scene than the early days when i first visited you in your backyard things have changed so much oh yeah yeah i was watching like i was watching an old video of me like when i came and visited you and we first chatted i, I watched the walkthrough video that you did way <laughs> back in the day when i had the little pop of 10 year uh-huh. and you had that little like had that little, little gopro pod. that little jingle in the background and you had your yeah you had it like a little um your selfie stick uh-huh. it, that was it was a gopro that was funny i don't even think i met you and then i see my brisket i'm like oh look at that bad brisket i'm like i'm glad kevin came back <laughs> It was because it was because of our conversation, and you were also building a pit. It was interesting. I was like, "What is this guy doing?" Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the two fifty. So, so the, yeah, that two fifty I was building. I was I was talking to Dennis quite a bit too. Like, like, how do you know how to do this? Or what do you you know? I had no idea that he was a welder by trade. Yeah, you know, I just thought he 
picked it up and decided to build himself a pit. Yeah, it's know. crazy. And it's crazy too, like all these different people that I've been talking to that are welders and, and building pits. Like that whole world has changed too. It's a it's a wild world we're living in. It's crazy. Uh huh. It's cool. It's I, yeah, I, I like those um, those chud pits right now, those chud boxes. Yeah, well, I'm posting a, ch a chud interview next week. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I really like what those guys are doing with like their yeah, their. Um... Yeah, he's on YouTube. Hey, hey hi, Kevin. Hi, you on YouTube? Hey, what's up? How are you? He said he saw you on YouTube. Yeah, thank you. He wants a beanie now because he saw your previous video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I should make Kevin, the uh, Kevin's Kevin, barbecue joints beanie. beanie. Do you have a Kevin barbecue joints beanie? <laughs> <laughs> You guys could sell them on your site, and I could, yeah. <laughs> like, fifty percent of the proceeds go to something. Like, we could figure it out, like, to animals or something. Or that's yeah. that's funny. I, it's a, it is funny. Yeah, like someone said that. Oh, that guy Ryan Cooper, who's in um, Nebraska. He said his kid thinks uh -huh. he's famous because I interviewed him on YouTube and they played it on the TV. So he's like, I want to be yeah. famous like my dad. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's so cool. so cool. I love it. But he wants to have a drone shot. He said he said famous people have drones, and I'm like, oh god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I don't You're have a drone. drone. It has to be for a professional video. Someone came and did a drone video for us, and some of it was here in our backyard, and then we took it to like uh, the kitchen, but we never, it never, it never. Huh made the final cut yeah. well also too like a lot of people get excited about doing stuff and then they realize they have to edit it and it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot of work at the end yeah it's a lot of work yeah enjoy your evening thank you guys for sitting down and uh hopefully i'll get to actually see you guys pretty soon but right now yeah i'm, I'm being careful um, it's, it's so nice to see your face and talk to you you know like we're always texting and it's so nice it this has been that's been the hardest part i think of all of this is really just missing that connection, that physical connection with your loved ones, your family, your friends. I can't wait to host a barbecue back here. Like or we, somewhere. Or yeah. somewhere, anywhere, you know, but just to be able to hang out safely and shake hands. Like today we met with some some people and, and it felt awkward doing business and not being able to like, like, hi, nice to meet you. You know, Michelle We shook and hands I, from like six feet apart. We we're just like, hey. It's weird. It's yeah. so weird giving hugs. Oh, you know, just. I'm not a big hugger, so that doesn't He isn't a big much, hugger, but. but I am. I'm a big hugger. I love, I love. Who's like, a big hugger? For my birthday, I turned 40 this year, and, you know, people just drove by, and within an hour and a half, I was completely shit-faced, and I didn't have to touch anybody, so <laughs> it was nice, and the party was over. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think that's a nice thing, like, yeah, like, just get it over with quick, and then just <laughs> move on. That's so yeah. nice. Enjoy your evening, and uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank well, you good talking to you, Kevin. Yeah, good talking to you. Missed you guys. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.